NASA is the American space giant responsible for sending people to space for decades and even putting people on the moon. The rich history and sky-high accomplishments of NASA are known around the world today. But for the last couple of decades, it seems like NASA has hit a plateau in terms of innovation and advancement. They've contracted out several tremendous tasks to private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Rocket Lab. Meanwhile, they've been working on something called the Space Launch System, which seems to be extremely expensive, especially in comparison to the competition. So, what happened to NASA? Well, starting off, one of the first tasks that NASA didn't do so hard in was of course the Space Shuttle. The Space Shuttle was an extremely ambitious program, and many of its goals were achieved. For instance, the Space Shuttle boasts a massive payload capacity of 29,000 kilograms. To put that in perspective, the Falcon 9's payload capacity to low Earth orbit is 22,800 kilograms, and that was developed decades later. Aside from this, the Space Shuttle would play an integral role in the construction of the International Space Station, as it was the only rocket ship at the time that was capable of carrying many of its parts. Evidently, the Space Shuttle was quite an important development. However, it failed at some of its core goals, such as providing reliable rocket reusability and reducing the cost of spaceflight. The Space Shuttle was reusable, but this didn't really help much. Till very recently, the Space Shuttle held the record for the fastest turnaround, clocking in at just 54 days. But when it comes to the reusability of the Space Shuttle, it wasn't the turnaround time that was the biggest problem. The real killer was the cost of reusing the Space Shuttle. At the end of today, the NASA Space Shuttle program cost a massive $209 billion, which allowed for 135 flights. That's the same as $1.55 billion per flight. At that rate, constructing 135 space shuttles may have come out to about the same price. NASA was well aware of this massive shortfall, and this is one of the main reasons they stopped the space shuttle program. Though it was unfortunate that this decision would strip America of being able to launch astronauts to space from American soil, this allowed NASA to get a clean slate and start over. This decision would lead them to start development of the space launch system. But the news so far about this is not very promising. In fact, NASA themselves estimate that a single launch of the space launch system will cost up to $2 billion. And that's not even including development costs. Meanwhile, SpaceX's upcoming Starship rocket not only has a larger payload capacity, but it also costs significantly less. SpaceX is hoping to bring down the cost of Starship launches down to just $2 million. But even if they underestimated this amount by 100x, a Starship launch will only cost a tenth of the price of an SLS launch. As you can see, NASA is not nearly as innovative today as they were during the Apollo days. But why? Well, unfortunately, in my opinion, the primary reason NASA has stalled for so long is politics. NASA is a government organization and is funded by taxpayer dollars. As a result, the President and Congress have significant control over an organization that they usually don't even have a very good understanding about. Moreover, even if they do have a solid science background, it's likely that politicians will favor funding organizations and programs that will help them get re-elected, as opposed to organizations that have waning interest. The truth is, even though NASA is an extremely important organization helping us travel and colonize beyond our own planet, public interest in space has been waning since the moon landing. You see, during the 1960s and 1970s, space exploration was a sense of pride for the average American, as tensions regarding the Cold War were at a peak. As a result, politicians were extremely willing to fund NASA, as that helped them garner massive public support. Once America won the space race though by placing people on the moon, the average American's interest in space exploration quickly dwindled away. For them, reaching the moon as JFK envisioned was the climax. And the next major space event that would get the average person riled up again was reaching Mars. Though improving rocket reusability and setting up a space station would lay the foundation for eventually reaching Mars, these weren't the most exciting of tasks, and so the average person slowly lost interest. In fact, a poll conducted in 2018 revealed that only 37.9% of respondents thought that returning to the moon is a priority right now. 42.9% straight up said that it's not a priority, and 19.2% responded that NASA should focus on sending robots. Given this sentiment, NASA's funding has slowly been cut. If you simply look up NASA's funding figures over the years, it would seem like the overall trend is clearly upwards. However, this doesn't account for inflation. After accounting for inflation, you'll see that in the late 1960s, 
NASA received a solid $40 billion annually in funding. Today, nearly 50 years later, they only receive half of that at $20 billion annually. Moreover, during the same time period, the American GDP has skyrocketed, meaning that the tax revenue has also skyrocketed. As a result, not only has NASA's actual funding itself gone down, but so has the percentage of tax revenue that NASA receives. In the 1960s, NASA was receiving up to 4% of the total tax revenue. By 2015 though, this number had tanked to just 0.5%. Aside from poor funding, NASA has to get approval from Congress for the structuring of their budget every year, which gives NASA very little flexibility as to how they spend their funding. This wouldn't be that big of a deal if there was a congruent goal amongst politicians, but this has not been the case whatsoever. For instance, just take a look at the proposed plans over the past 20 years. In 2004, the Bush administration would come up with the Constellation program. This program was supposed to put NASA on the pathway to retiring the space shuttle program and reaching the moon. The plan called for the development of a rocket called Ares and a spaceship called Orion. NASA would quickly get to work on this plan, spending over $9 billion over the next couple of years on research and development. After President Obama took office though, he would scrap the Constellation program and instead approve the SLS program. This means that the $9 billion that NASA spent on the Constellation program was basically a complete waste. Aside from this, Obama would also change the focus of NASA from returning to the moon to launching astronauts to Mars and asteroids. But just as this plan was settling in, President Trump would come in and shift the focus of NASA back to the moon. Business Insider estimates that this constant switching of plans from one president to the next has cost taxpayers $20 billion in just the last three administrations. In addition to the wasted resources on each scrap, the constant change of goals no doubt prevents momentum from building up, making it difficult for NASA to make any real progress. Aside from these various political games, NASA has also suffered from an aging workforce. Astronaut Harrison Schmidt points out that the average age of mission control during the Apollo days was just 26 years old. Today, the average age of a NASA employee is closer to 60. Evidently, NASA hasn't been that attractive for the younger generations. In the mid-1900s, one of the most common dreams for kids was becoming an astronaut. However, over the past 50 years, so many interesting opportunities aside from space have come to fruition with the help of technology. Many kids nowadays want to become YouTubers and gamers and entrepreneurs. The percentage of kids who want to become astronauts when they grow up is definitely not as high as it used to be. Moreover, for kids that do want to become astronauts or work in the space industry, NASA is not generally their first choice, SpaceX is. Kids today grow up watching SpaceX landing their boosters and sending a roadster to space and working on reaching Mars. This is further accelerated by Elon Musk's clever use of social media. Every time SpaceX completes a mission, whether successfully or unsuccessfully, you can bet that Elon will be posting the results to his 43.2 million Twitter followers. As a result, young adults don't want to go work at NASA where things really haven't moved for decades. They want to go work at SpaceX with Elon Musk. And that brings me on to my final point, which is that NASA themselves have become self-aware of their shortcomings. Given that NASA has been around for over 60 years, their leaders have come to the realization that NASA is limited by government funding, declining public interest, and an aging workforce. Thus, they have decided to embrace commercial spaceflight themselves. NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein has placed a heavy focus on using NASA funding to fund SpaceX, Blue Origin, and Boeing, as the money will likely have a larger impact in the free market. The number of commercial spaceflight customers is quite limited, and NASA is no doubt one of the biggest customers, if not the biggest. And they've decided that promoting competition within the commercial spaceflight industry is the best way they can spend their money. At the end of the day, NASA is the pioneer of space travel and exploration. Over the years, they've continuously tried to push the envelope, but have often failed due to a variety of external forces they have no control over. Considering this, they've decided to fund private companies that don't have the same restrictions that NASA does. And while they continue to work on programs like SLS, I have a feeling that their main focus right now is working with private companies to revolutionize the future of space travel and colonization. But what do you guys think is the main reason for the declining innovation from NASA? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys thought this video explained NASA's obstacles well. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas 
and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.